Hi! Let's have a look at dropdowns today. How to create a dropdown, how to set dropdown values via the inspector, how to get values when the player uses them. Then we will expand by adding and removing values in code, and we'll have a look at how to style your dropdown so it can fit your game better. And lastly, we will set the action that is being called when a value is changed by script as well. That is not always needed, but you might run into this case. You find your dropdown under UI, Dropdown, Text Mesh Pro. How to get a value. When you select your dropdown, you have a dropdown component with a lot of entries you might already know from a typical button component. We will get to these settings in a moment, but first let's focus on this part, the options you want to provide to your player. The list comes predefined with these entries, and you can set new ones by clicking here and entering new texts. Sprites will come in a moment too. On value change is a list of events which get called when a new value is being picked from the list. This is what we need. Let's create a simple script to make it work. Call it get value from dropdown. It needs a reference to the dropdown itself, and for the beginning we will just use a simple debug log to show the changes being made. Save the script, attach it to your dropdown, reference it, and hit play. When we change the value, we can see it in the console, but as you can see, we do not get the name we entered, but the index of the entry in the list. We can use this index to access the actual entry name like this. Save the index to a value, then look up the value at the index's position inside the options list. How to set a value? Setting a value by script is equally straightforward, but you can do it in different ways depending on your use case. Let's say you want to create just a single entry. For this, you can add it by dropdown, options, add. The item you're being asked to give is a tmp dropdown dot options data entry, and you can just create one right here like this. I'll only be using the text value, but if you want to also set a sprite, just add a comma and a reference to your sprite value. To have your changes be visible, add dropdown dot refresh shown value at the end of the method. If you need more than just one entry or want to prepare a list of entries in the inspector, you can create a similar options list as the one on the dropdown by creating a list of TMP dropdown options data like this. You can add those entries to the ones already in the list by dropdown.addOptions. And a short aside, I'll be writing a few more methods during this tutorial, which I want to call straight from the component itself. If you do not have Odin Inspector, you can just replace every button attribute you see with context menu. Instead of a button in the inspector, you will be able to call it by right-clicking the component and choosing the corresponding method from the context menu. It makes it so much easier to test. How to remove values? You might have to remove entries from the list, either by index or by name. First, the index version. You just tell the dropdown to remove the entry at the specific index. In case the corresponding value had been selected before removing it, check if that really is the case, then set the dropdown value to zero and again refresh the shown value. If you need to remove by name, it works quite similarly. Check which entry the list corresponds to the name you're looking for, and if it's being found, remove it, reset the picked value, and again refresh the shown value. At that point, you can break out of the loop. The styling options. All right, let's see what we can do when it comes to design and start with the options the component hands us. These should already be known to you. They handle what happens with your graphics on hover, click, and so on. Works like a button component. But these here are new. Template refers to a child element which got created when you added the dropdown to your scene. The template is where you style your entries. Don't remove it from your dropdown. Caption text is the text directly on top of the dropdown. In case you want sprites you set in the options to show up, you need to set some image component to your caption image. It can be any image in your scene. I will create a new image in my dropdown 
call it caption image. Reposition the text a little and then reference it in the main component like this. I honestly haven't found a single use case for placeholder, so if you know one, please let us know in the comments. The box below the dropdown is a little bit more complex, depending on what you need. First, the template has a scroll rate. You can change values here to make scrolling faster or slower, for example. The viewport has a mask component, so if you need a bit of a different shape, you can change it here. Content refers to a single entry in the list. Its first child element is a toggle, so you can only ever set one as a value. And again, you can change the way it transitions here. In case you don't want to display a whole box around your entries and instead want every entry to have its own background, disable the image in template and enable the image component in item background. Item checkmark is hopefully self-explanatory and in label you can change the look of the topography. Again, if you want to have a small sprite displayed in the entry, you will need to create a new image. Rearrange the layout a bit and reference it back in the drop-down component here. Lastly, you can also change the visuals of the scroll bar itself. How to change the action on click? Maybe you run into the situation of needing to set the on value changed action by script. You can do it with just a single line of code like this. The action you hand to it will need an int parameter as the click action sends the index of the picked value when called. In case there has already been set a listener, you might have to remove it. Without it, let's say you add the action to call five times. This means it would get called five times whenever you click on the dropdown. If you change the listeners by script, it's good practice to unsubscribe them once they aren't being needed anymore. For this, add a simple onDestroy method and remove the listener you added before. I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And have a great week.